it's quaint around here. Good food, good it beer, is. hot chicks on horses and bikinis. You know, of all the Hook Shots episodes we have ever filmed, in my opinion, the one that has seemingly resonated with more people, particularly on the East Coast where I live, is when we moused the Upper Delaware River for brown trout. Now, I did this with my longtime friend and veteran Upper Delaware guide, Joe D. Mulderis. And what we learned in Three Nights on That River is that stripping mouse flies in the dark is a very viable way to catch the browns on our home waters. And while this is a relatively new style of fishing for us, mousing certainly doesn't have its origins in the Northeast. Now, while there's no definitive answer to where mousing got its start, a lot of votes would be cast, including my own, for the rivers of Northern Michigan. Now, over the last couple years, guy Brian Kosminski of True North Trout has been subtly hinting that I need to get myself up to the mitten and sling some rodents around on his home waters. Did you just pull up on a bicycle? So this summer, I finally said, all right, dude, I agree. I want to mouse with you. And to bring this Hookshot's mousing theme full circle, I am bringing Joe D with me. Just so happened, social media as it was, you guys were talking about different, different mousing techniques. And the Master Splinter caught my attention. And I thought, there's some, there's some particular Northern Michigan rivers that these gentlemen need to check out. So coming out to Michigan, you know, I, I knew it was a, a trout paradise and the Trout Unlimited was founded in Michigan. I talked to some friends out here before I came. They kind of told me the types of rivers that were going to be here. I never fished here before. Now here's the thing about Michigan. It has got its mainstay world famous rivers, most notably the Ausable, the Pere Marquette, and the Manistee. But we weren't fishing on any of those. As a matter of fact, I'm not even going to tell you what river we were fishing because Kaz is dialed in to some real sleeper stuff. The Asable and the Manistee were both made super popular just so that these further north rivers didn't gain as much attention as, as what we, we know that they hold. The first night seeing a river, it's all over grown on each side of it with cedars and bushes and alders and the river is tight i mean it is skinny i don't know how you cast a mouse through here once the lights go out this is this is going to be something the roll cast is your your absolute number one go-to cast not only is there a whole bunch of stuff up above you and behind you there's a lot of stuff underneath you too and all those fish that you're hooking into they know exactly where it's safe those fish are so tucked in that it made perfect sense that they're not gonna come out and feed until after the sun goes down. You know, first time on this river, don't you know it? And it's not quite dark yet. Suddenly, all around us, sky to ground lightning with buckets of rain. And then Josie's bunghole tightens up. Totally gnarly. <laughs> gnarly. And after wasting a couple good mousing hours, just hunkered down. The deluge has ceased for a moment. So maybe now we can actually mouse. You know, you're making your first cast, you're being really cautious because you got to know where you're going to put your back cast first. And it's just a uh, fly eating, you know, environment you're in. And I quickly realized that this is some of the most technical, just gnarly night fishing. <laughs> I think the hardest part though is you got to find the mentality or the habit of the fish and each fish is different and each bend's going to be different. We're debating on whether we should throw bigger or throw smaller. I've had, I've had two hits, Joe. How many have you had so far? Three. You know, obviously moving fish isn't the same as hooking fish. So we're getting boils and uh, tail nips, short strikes, but then suddenly bang. Talk to me. Not a huge fish, but it is a fish. It's yeah. actually a little, little fish. It's an icebreaker fish. You know what? He's halfway to 20. <laughs> <laughs> now, this river certainly has a lot bigger fish than that, but we felt like, all right, we're getting the hang of this new water. We're getting the hang of the caveats to cause a style of mousing. Josie gets a little guy, then all of a sudden we didn't feel anything happen. And it was like, the storm had gone and the electricity had gone. And you felt that window shut, you know, we're wet, we're tired. And even though we didn't crush a big fish, at least now we have a better feel for this river and it's only gonna make us more on it tomorrow night.
because you're out there so late when you're mousing, it would have been very easy for me to sleep till oh one o'clock in the afternoon. But there's so much water, so much water. You can never, you can never exhaust all the possibilities that we have in the tip of the mitt. So here we are after a grueling first day on this iconic, classic Michigan brook trout stream. You know, suddenly you, you start thinking back how, you know, this is where it started. Right there. Ready? Oh! These waters are cold, they're pristine, they're perfect for three weight lovers. This is my kind of water. And it was really cool to sort of just get back to fly fishing roots for an afternoon. You know, we all want to catch big fish, right? But as a fly fisherman, if you can't appreciate the colors on an eight inch wild brook trout, you're not getting the whole picture. It was kind of nice to be like low impact, you know, soft rod, smaller rod, a spool of tippet, and a couple of flies jammed in your pocket. We saw some, some absolutely gorgeous terrain. We saw some beautiful fish. But as the afternoon goes on in the back of your head, you're thinking, I am really pumped to gear back up for tonight. What's up, everybody? As you can see, it's just about dark which means it's almost time for a light source. Red light is good because it doesn't spook fish. White light spooks fish, so you gotta be careful. And if you ever pull up to a spot I'm fishing and throw your headlights on, I might kick your What the hell's your problem? Tell you the truth though, I'm not a huge fan of headlamps because you often have to look straight at the ground to get the light to go where you want it to. So here's a solution from the old school surf casting book. Get yourself some thin, flexible tubing from the aquarium store, some old fashioned duct tape, and a small El Cheapo flashlight from the dollar store. Cut the tubing into a short necklace length, not too long, but not too short where it strangles you. Duct tape the tubing to the flashlight around the middle. Now you have quick access to a light you can hold with your mouth. It may sound stupid, but it puts the light right where you need it when you're retying. And if you lose it, who cares? I got hot coffee, the sun is shining. I took like four Advil. It's, it's game time, baby. We got on the river again last night, same spot, same section. River was up two, maybe three inches. Definitely a little bit lightly coffee stained. Joe D and I are looking at the water going, man, it has stained up just right in our eyes for a streamer bite. And I said, you know what? Give me a big old black meat fly and let's start swinging some of this wood. So I'm in the back of the skiff watching Joe throw that streamer and I'm as excited as he is watching that streamer just, you know, hit all the juicy spots, just knowing that at any second, you know, just a, a, a tank is gonna come out and crush it. We round into this little section I like to call Little Montana because it opens up a little bit and there's a nice deep soft bank and Joe just lays up a slump buster up against that bank and all of a sudden it lit up. <laughs> oh yeah! Nice. That fish just slammed that streamer with everything it had and hopefully that's a sign of the activity because we only got a little bit of daylight left. And after struggling the night before, it's like, ugh, we needed this. Like, I needed to see this fish. But it leaves you with a problem. This whole bank looks so juicy right now and you want to keep streamer in it. But if there's fish that size here, I think we're just going to eat a meatloaf sandwich. We're going to let it get dark. And then we're going to try and get them the way we came to get them. Suddenly you're thinking of those big boils you had the night before and what, what was under that boil that you didn't stick. A couple tangles in the trees, rolling it in, rolling it out, and all of a sudden the flush went down. It just got crushed. I don't know how big this fish is, but he took it like a piece. So let's just say you kind of hear me fighting this trout, but you don't see a whole lot. I, I am not a photographer by any stretch of the imagination. What do we got, Joe? How'd we do? I don't know. I don't even know it, but the camera's like zoomed way in. <laughs> Solid Michigan 18. Hit that like they're supposed to. And you always think they're bigger than they are when they go. But given the night we had last night, I'll take that all day or night. We're like, wow, this is great. We're getting some action. Got a nice fish in the net early on. We had a lot of river ahead of us, and we didn't even get to the good 
spots we were at the night before yet. Yeah, yeah. boys. Let's do it again. <laughs> we rode up, we rode down. All of a sudden, we weren't seeing the action that we were hoping for, that we saw before, and we know the fish are there. And you start to realize that the short time between when your streamer fish ate and your mouse fish ate, that was your window. Two hours later, we know that we've, we've worked all of our all of our banks exhausted all of our opportunities and the fish pretty much just shut down and said they were done. You know, we spent two nights in the dark on a river you never on before. Learned a lot of things that, you know, I can, I'm gonna take home with me. And you don't do this for the trophy. You do it because you love the challenge of mousing. There's always that thought that that next cast, that next bend, that next down tree, that, that fish is sitting there waiting. And if, if you're not putting that fly over his head, you don't. You just lost all opportunity. So we're out there, and we're gonna we're gonna keep doing it. Well, I can tell you from experience, it's always the guide's fault. <laughs> <laughs> well, guys, I'm gonna need a redo on the high five. With a little stinger in the ass.